Are you a new amateur radio operator or you've just been thinking about maybe getting your license and joining this awesome hobby? Well, today I'm going to go through some top resources to help you as a beginner with ham radio. Now, all the links for these resources and everything that I talk about in this video will be linked in the description below, so check those out as we go along. So the first thing we're going to look at is how to get your license. Now, on my channel, a majority of the viewers are from Australia, the United States, Canada and the UK. So I'm going to go through the licensing process for each of those countries first. So in the United States, the first place that I would visit to get my amateur radio license is the ARRL. This is uh, the ARRL.org getting license page. This gives you all the information about the technician license. This is the entry level license choice in the United States for ham radio operators. Most ham radio operators pass this as their first uh, step in and they are given certain privileges um, to certain bands, uh, all of the frequencies above 30 megahertz. There's 35 questions. This is on radio theory, regulation and operating. Uh, and then the next one up is general license. General license then opens up the world of HF radio, mainly um, including some different modes as well, which you can use on HF radio. Same thing again is 35 question exam. And then the next upgrade again is the top level of license is the amateur extra license. And this gives you to access to all frequencies and all modes uh, in the United States. Um, that question pool is a little bit more difficult. It's 50 questions that need to be passed. But if you would like to get started in the United States, then you can find a class, you can take practice exams, you can also find a location um, and also have a look at some of the questions available on this webpage for the United States through passing your exam this way. And I'm going to go through some more resources that you can use to help you study going forward uh, in the next section of this video. Next is Australia, and this is the Wireless Institute of Australia's webpage, and this gives information about the foundation license here. This is the entry-level license to amateur radio here in Australia, where I live, and this gives you access to certain frequencies within the HF bands, also on some VHF and UHF frequencies as well. Gives you a bit of an idea of the distances and who you can talk to, who you can work, um, some of the technologies that are available, as well as some of the other uh, resources that you can use to get started, including a trial uh, exam as well. And if you go up here to your amateur radio license, you can also have a look at some of the other licenses that are available, the standard and the advanced license. If you want to sit for an exam to pass your amateur radio license or you'd like more information, then the best thing to do is to go to the Wireless Institute of Australia's website, click here on Affiliated Radio Clubs, select the area or the state that you live in. So I live here in Tasmania and there is a list of amateur radio clubs here on the left hand side and you can go ahead and click on a uh, club that's in your area. This is my club here in Hobart and this will give you some contact information to contact the club to give you more information about how uh, and when these test times are available to sit your exam. Next is the Radio Society of Great Britain in the UK. If you go to their website, there is a beginners tab here at the top and you can go to what is amateur radio under getting started. And this gives you a good description of what amateur radio is and how to get involved. If you scroll down here on the right hand side under amateur radio in introduction, this gives you some more information. There is a link here also information for students. So this tells you how to get started with uh, their entry level license, which is the foundation license. And uh, you can then go to some other links here, find out more information. This gives you some information on the course, uh, how much it's going to cost, how to find an exam, 26 multiple choice questions, you have an hour, etc. So more information about the foundation exam, what happens after the exam. So all of the information that you require to get your, get your license in the UK is available on the Radio Society of Great Britain's website. And finally, the Radio Amateurs of Canada website, the RAC, they've got a page here which details some of the requirements that you need to become an amateur radio operator in Canada. It includes a multiple choice exam of 100 questions. Uh, there's various different levels. There's a basic qualification. There is a basic with honours and also an advanced qualification. Um, there's some more information here on that 
uh, on this page. There's also some call signs that you'll be given depending on wh whatever province or territory you may live in in Canada and also the fees that are required there too. So check those out in the link below depending on what country I've just gone through. So as we have established, you need to pass an exam to become an amateur radio operator. So what are some resources that you can go to to help you with that? Well, the first one that I want to point out here is Ham Radio Prep. Ham Radio Prep offers courses uh, designed for the amateur radio exam in the United States. So they've got courses for the technician license, the general license, and the amateur extra license, uh, which are full courses. I've started my amateur extra license course recently, and uh, I'm going through that because I'm a, a general. I've got a general license in the United States, and I want to upgrade to extra, and I'm going through their interactive course, uh, which is really uh, my style of learning. So they've got a few different ways of uh, study. They've got studying via the website or via an app. And on the app, they also have a free test exam that you can also take to see how you're traveling along. So Hem Radio Prep, I wanna thank them because they do sponsor this video. And you can also get 20% off any course at Ham Radio Prep using the uh, code HAMDX, which is in the description below. So check out Ham Radio Prep for uh, courses on how to get your amateur radio exam in the United States. The next resource is Ham Study. This is by Signal Stuff. You might know them from Signal Sticks. I've used uh, Signal Sticks antennas on my channel before. But they also have a website called Ham Study, and this allows you to go in here and uh, find out more about what is ham radio, how you get licensed, and tips and tricks. You can also go into any of these license classes. So here's the Amateur Extra class. You can do a study mode if you open that up and run that. You can uh, either create an account to track your progress or you can continue as a guest. And once you're in study mode, you can go through these questions and this will track your progress as you go along. Not only that, you can read the questions. So here you can go through and view some questions with the correct answers. Uh, it gives you the question, it gives you the correct answer in green. You can click this little tab here and it gives you more information about that particular question. And these are the questions that you're going to come across in the actual exam itself. And finally, you can also do practice exams as well and this will allow you to select the answers and you can go through these all the way through to the end and you can grade the exam and see how you went. Now, of course, if you're logged in, then this will also track your progress so you can see how well you're doing over time. Here in Australia, the best place to get started is by purchasing the Foundation License Manual. You can go to the Wireless Institute of Australia's website. This is $35 and the fourth edition Foundation License Manual is the latest version. You can also pick this up at most amateur radio uh, clubs, your nearest club as well as mentioned before. So this uh, gives you your entry into amateur radio. Now, if you're more interested in a course rather than from a book, then Fred VK3DAC does Foundation standard and also advanced license courses uh, to contact him email trainsafe at silvertrain.com.au to ask when his next course is and uh, these run generally for a couple of weeks you can also check out the radio and electronics school uh, they offer a range of courses for the various different license levels foundation standard advance these uh, more information is available at their website res.net.au and finally, my radio club, the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania, have a free training and assessment foundation license course, which is available on uh, YouTube, on their YouTube channel. And it is basically in 10 uh, videos, which you can go through to learn all you need to know about the foundation license and the basics towards uh, passing your exam. Now I reached out to my friends in the UK to ask them what the best uh, websites are to go to for courses and also other training materials for the amateur radio exam and they come up with a couple of websites. The first one is, is essexham.co.uk. They uh, give a lot of information about getting your amateur radio license as well as some other questions. Once you've got your license, your first handheld, your first station, getting started guides, etc. So check out Essex Ham. The other one is also the 
the online amateur radio community, the OARC. They give training. Um, they've got courses and other information on their website too. So um, if you want to check those two out in the UK, Next up is Canada. Um, I mentioned the Radio Amateurs of Canada before. They also um, offer um, information on amateur radio courses that are run. Uh, for instance, here there's a course that is run by the uh, Annapolis Valley Amateur Radio Club. I probably butchered that name. Um, the fall 2023 will begin in September, so this month and registrations will most likely begin soon. So there's some information on getting your amateur radio license via a course in Canada at the Radio Amateurs of Canada website. So what about now that you are licensed and you want to sort of learn the ropes and learn more about the dis different aspects of amateur radio? Well, there's two uh, resources which I would encourage you to have a look at. One is if you're already an ARRL member, uh, you already have these built into your membership. The first one is, is the ARRL Learning Center. They've got a variety of courses available on their website that you can go through and you can study and watch some interactive videos and things. For instance, here there's information on grounding and bonding, getting started with summits on the air, uh, getting started with PODA. There's also a general license class here with Dave Kassler. Oh, repeater basics by someone uh, that I know quite personally. Uh, digital multimeters, um, antenna zoning, education. So there's a whole bunch of different courses that you can do here on the ARRL Learning Center. The other resource which is also from the ARRL is the On The Air magazine. This is a magazine that is produced in addition to QST and QCX magazines. This uh, magazine is designed towards beginners, but it also has a lot of information for those who have been hams for quite a while. I know that I learn a lot from uh, going through this, uh, this magazine and uh, it's very well structured. There's a lot of information here in regards to uh, just basics for, for beginners. So check out on the air uh, magazines, which you can get a digital copy on the ARRL's uh, website. And there are also various books on amazon.com too. Most of these are from the ARRL, so you can purchase these from the ARRL shop or you can get them from Amazon as well. Uh, this one's a good one here, the ARRL Ham Radio License Manual, uh, the General License Class Manual, um, Ham Radio for Dummies. There's lots of different books here all about amateur radio and uh, you can pick these up from Amazon. I'll put a link to better ones that I would recommend on my my Amazon. There is an affiliate link below if you want to use that. Uh, for instance, here the ARRL handbook. I've done a video on the ARRL handbook before and how useful it might be for you. Um, I'll put a link up in the cards too to that video if you want to check that out. A common question that I always get on my channel is, is what radio should I get? I'm a new ham. Should I get this radio or that radio? I've done various reviews on my own channel um, detailing different radio comparisons and beginner radios. I'll put a link up in the cards to those if you want to check that out as well. But sometimes that question can be a little bit hard because it all depends on whether you want short, medium range communication, long range communication. Do you just want to talk across town? Do you want to talk just across the world? One of the uh, resources that I would recommend once you know what you want is going to something like eham.net. This is where you can view reviews on a particular radio. So if you scroll down here, uh, you've got transceivers. So we can have a look to, at um, VHF, UHF, amateur transceiver reviews. And it's got all of the radios with a star rating here and also comments. So we can go into, let's, let's find a IC207H. I used to have this radio years ago. Overall, 3.9 out of 5 stars with reviews and ratings here that people have left over over the years. You can use this to judge whether this radio is right for you. And the other website is RigPix, rigpix.com. A lot of people I've noticed don't really know too much or they've forgotten about RigPix. Basically, this gives you all of the technical specifications on a particular radio. So let's go into ICOM here and scroll down to mobile, VHF, UHF. This has pretty much every ICOM radio that's ever been produced and we select on the 207 we can see a photo of it there all of the specifications In some cases download the user manual you can see when it was manufactured all of the accessories that were available with it so that's rigpix.com and then there is of course um, youtube and i've just got some handheld reviews here in a playlist i've also got some mobile and also hf radios in other playlists and i'll link those below too if you want to check those out 
when it comes to learning how to get your signal from A to B, perhaps around the world, there's a couple of tools that I use. The first one here is SolarHam, SolarHam.net. This gives you all of the information in regards to current solar conditions, so solar flux index, sunspot number. You can read up on all of this sort of information, but the good thing that I look at here is just the real-time graph here of what's going on as far as flares are concerned so you can tell when there's hf blackouts um, when things are a little bit quiet on the radio and you're wondering why you can go here you can also go to cycle 25 which is what we're in at the moment you can see the progression and this shows you the sunspots and the solar flux obviously the higher the better uh, then uh, then that's also handy as well the other thing that i also use is the propagation by KC2G, this is the maximum usable frequency map. This sort of details uh, maximum usable frequencies across the world. And you can see here that this is um, in different shades here with uh, various frequencies. So obviously you can see here that there's a, a dark spot here, which is maximum usable frequency of about 7 megahertz over here in the middle of the the ocean on its way towards South America um, because it's the uh, middle of the night or just about to be the middle of the night over there. And then you've also got here a maximum usable frequency here in the Pacific of 31 megahertz, 29 megahertz. So just looking at that probably means that we might get some propagation across on 10 meters. Here um, on the right-hand side, if I just hide myself, you can see 35 and 36 megahertz up here. Uh, 32, 30. So there's a couple of different little spots here with these graphs that you can kind of tell where propagation might be. And that sort of leads hand in hand with the next resource, which is PSK Reporter. Now, if we have a look here, PSK Reporter, at the moment, I've gone to pskreporter.info and I've entered in here the band, which is 10 meters. I have shown want to show signals sent and received by the country of call sign which is my call sign so my all of the signals sent from my call sign uh call signs country using fta over the last 15 minutes and you can see up here to japan and all the way across here to europe so that kind of matches up with our maximum usable frequency here you can see there's a big big patch here which is kind of like 30 megs saying that we've got quite a lot of uh, propagation up here to europe and and also to Asia as well. So that kind of matches up with this. All of this data is driven from WSJTX, FT8. Um, you can also um, choose other modes as well. So, um, so they're available if they're being reported, but the main one that I use is FT8 because there's just so much raw data. So we can get a, a snapshot and a very uh, quick look at what propagation is doing. So if I change this to say to 15 meters from VK, then it's looking very, very similar, but we've also got a couple of spots here over to the US as well. If I go now down to 20 meters and we'll have a look, 20 meters is showing quite a massive amount of stations over here to the US and to Europe at the moment. So 20 meters is looking pretty good. And the last one that I use is tropospheric ducting. This is mainly for VHF and UHF. So you can go to uh, the William Hepburn DX Info Center website and you can select your region. So here I've got uh, Australia and if you actually click on the map, it will update and it will change the time and the date for the propagation forecast. And basically anything that here is on this legend, anything that's sort of high and above, you can expect, or moderate and above, you can expect that there might be some propagation um, happening. So let's just go, let's just try uh, Western North America, so the West Coast. And you can see here there's quite a big red um, patch. Here's Hawaii down here. If we just progress this along, it looks like there's a little bit of a duct up the coast here. Um, because of the weather patterns that are in uh, western United States and California and across to Hawaii here, then you can sort of predict that you might be able to talk up and down the coast on VHF and UHF using tropospheric ducting. So that's another useful resource as well. So are there any other resources that I may have missed? Then let me know in the comments below. I've got lots of beginner videos on my YouTube channel. If you want to learn more, then I'll pop a playlist up of those right here. Thank you very much for watching and uh, 73. Hope to hear you on the band soon.